Taiwan's largest contracting businesses. Um, we employ more than 5,000 people um, and 11,000 including our subcontracting team. Um, we're more than 300 people now in our BIM team actually. Um, so that includes BIM, drafting, 4D, QSing, that side of it. Um, so BIM is a huge part of our organisation and actually a, a really, really important part or one of our success factors for transforming the business. Uh, but why are we transforming the business? So we're entering a golden era in Hong Kong in construction. Uh, you can see here in 2023 um, that actually uh, we're doing around 280, 290 uh, billion GDP in construction. Um, but that is obviously going to grow um, with a huge push of public uh, infrastructure projects. Um, and on the right hand side, you can see the hectares and actually where the projects are being constructed is an important part of our business model. So you can see the northern new metropolis as well as the um, in, inland Tao Island, essentially. Um, so essentially, the message or the, the, di the vision for us to, to, to get to is really the construction GDP is increasing, um, but we need to increase our productivity because there's less people, there's a bit of a brain drain on the industry, but we've got to do more work essentially. So that, that's our critical driver. Also, we're moving from a period, so this is from the latest policy address, um, we're moving from a traditional construction process to a, a more modern method of construction or high productivity construction method. So that's MIC, BFMA, MIMEP, there's a lot of buzzwords in there. Uh, and we're seeing that in our own projects as well now. So two projects there for us. So Tompkins Street is the first private developer to jump onto MIC. Uh, it's actually the tallest project. Uh, and City U, uh, which is, uh, I think, the largest MIC project actually in terms of, in terms of number of modules and scale. So we're transitioning from construction to production. So how do we do that? So we look at five parts essentially as a business. So we've got to be able to design better. We can't use drawings. Well, we can use drawings, but we, we need to supplement them with, with better information. Also, we need to be involved earlier within the contract. The second thing is we need to plan better, which I'll talk, touch on a little bit later. The third one is we need to standardize, but not only standardize, we need to productize. So we build things from reusable parts. The fourth thing is that we need to engage our supply chain better. We're a, we're a contractor, but also a huge part of success is a, around the logistics planning of the project. So not just what we do on the site, how do we get the modules, how do we ensure the quality of those modules is, is good enough. And then finally, the CBE, and I'll leave on our, on the, our video for the CBE um, as part of our CT submission. Um, and, but really, how do we supplement that with the product data management part? Um, so if anybody's heard of the Grenfell disaster, which happened in the UK, um, a lot of those decision-making processes were lost um, due to being in multiple places um, and sometimes in hard copy and on CDs. So uh, we don't want to fall foul of that. So the golden thread is a huge success factor for us transitioning the organization. <coughs> so today we're going to touch on the second uh, one, which is around planning better. Uh, and I think every single uh, person today has talked about spatio-temporal uh, planning. Um, but this is really critical for us. And the example here on the top right hand corner actually is around how we manage the kinetic envelope of one of our projects at the airport. Um, so we are not allowed to exceed a certain height throughout the construction. So if we were looking at a tower crane installation, we'd only see it from a, from a horizontal thing. We'd only look at the swept path. Uh, but actually here, we need to manage a vertical envelope, which means we need to transition to 3D. The one on the bottom, um, so we've talked a lot about tendering, um, but actually telling a good story, I think, is a, is a message which regularly goes overlooked. Um, and that construction methodology is, is really how are we going to do the construction? Um, and yeah, a picture speaks a thousand words in, in this instance. But essentially, where are we positioning things? How do we identify risk? Um, and how do we do the sequencing for the temporary case? Because remember, the permanent case is, is less risky for us as an organization. 
what do we do with all the temporary works? I talked about the transition from uh, traditional construction to more modern methods of construction or high productivity construction. So that means that because we're delivering parts which can't be altered on the site very easily, the sequence in what we install them, but also the elements themselves need to be very, very accurate. So here's a couple of examples, one's with precast units, the other one's with MIC, um, where essentially we, we organize and we have QR codes. So essentially once a module is lifted into place, we scan the QR code, it's registered as being complete, the next one can be lifted essentially. It goes for the same with MIC, it needs to be very, very accurate. And here's an example where we're actually on the site. So this is done actually by our site teams. And you can see here there's two options. Um, one for lifting it in between the bridge and the deck, uh, and another one for lifting it off, uh, off the platform. Um, both have got their pros and cons, but essentially this allows us to engage the front line uh, to show them sometimes it can't work, other times there's a better way of thinking about it. So really this is a, an engagement part. And when we're focusing on engagement as well, our clients and our customers and our front line expect a different level of engagement nowadays. They expect this 3D experience. They expect to be able to walk through the model. So a lot of our sites now have these immersive environments, whether you're looking at <coughs> viewing it in a headset um, or viewing it in a So I'm just going to finish up a very short presentation, but I'm just going to finish up on a video of what we're doing at Gammon um, and cover a lot of the fuse or content within.